Welcome back at WNST, Dallas and Baltimore, and Baltimore positive. I, you know, I, I put the rainbow up because I had Todd Schuler coming on, who has become a, uh, a frequent visitor on the wall here of uh, sunshine and prosperity and damngoodlawyer.com. There's going to come a point where his partner, Mark Miller, uh, my middle school friend, junior high school friend, Mark Miller, uh, is going to come on and talk some baseball. But, but Mark said, we're going to talk baseball in baseball season. Uh, how dare I try to talk basketball in basketball season? But, you know, with the rainbow out here, uh, you know, over, well, over this shoulder, sorry about that. I, I always get messed up on the, on the Chiron. But um, I wanted to talk to you. This week I had um, – Jackie McCusker on. Do you know who Jackie is, by the way, Todd? I do. I, I, that is the widow of the great Scunny McCusker. Actually, absolutely. Absolutely. Patrick uh, Scunny McCusker. Uh, and I, you know, I told the story, my, my wife and I, the night we got engaged on Federal Hill, which is on this, well, this, this side. Yeah, I got to get it. Uh, we got engaged on Federal Hill. The first thing we did is we got in the car, and because my wife had no idea I was proposing to her. And five minutes later, we're on, in the car on the way to Canton, to celebrate at Nacho Mama's with a Natty Bow, which we did 18 years ago next week. How about that? So is Mazel that good? Tov. Well done. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So spot, you know, like. I, I had Jackie on, and I've been quoting her. Okay, so this is a woman who tragically lost her husband, you know, at Ocean City, as anybody who knows Scunny knows about. It's been nine years now. It's incredible to me. Uh, summer 2012. Uh, I was up in uh, in Nova Scotia, believe it or not, when that happened. So I had never really met Jackie, had her on the show. I encourage everyone to go watch it. Uh, watch me and Mickey Kachella, Brian Recker, other people you know, Todd. But she said to me, and I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you go with this because this is where the rainbow starts. All right, she's trying to find the beauty in COVID. Find the beauty in COVID. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that on your side of the table down in Essex uh, at Blondell Miller Schuler and let you. Tell me about finding the beauty on, of COVID. Right? How about well, that? you know, there, there is uh, the Woodstock movie soundtrack, uh, and I think it's uh, David Crosby that says uh, there's always a little bit of heaven in a disaster area, right? And uh, I think that's right, right in the same wheelhouse. But we had it early on. I mean, the beauty in COVID, remember, I'm, and I'm back in the office, and, you know, like, we've slowly opened up, opened up. You look but, good, too. That's a nice tie. That's I appreciate good. it. I had court this morning. You don't wear a tie very often around here. No, no, I, I, uh, I don't, you know, I'm not in the courtroom as much, which is part of the beauty. I've said before, this COVID might kill me, but it definitely saved me from a heart attack because I was, uh, I was a road warrior. We were in court uh, multiple times a week, every week. Uh, so uh, there's some beauty there. There was all, ultimate beauty in the time home with others, uh, you know, to be with your family. We're going to look back and we're going to miss uh, being cramped up together and having a big giant year long snow day, uh, you know, doing puzzles and playing board games with the kids has been, you know, uh, that, that was a magical part of it. Um, so yeah, there, there's beauty. I mean, it's a, it's a terrible tragedy. It's been awful people, the way we've pulled together. And I know it has felt like we were just like ripping ourselves apart at the seams, but people, people have been looking out for each other. People look it out for, for, for the neighbors. My, my neighborhood has grown together. We have, a, you know, a great crew of, you know, young families, I guess. And, uh, you know. Where's home for you? What's the neighborhood you live in? I live in downtown Baldwin, Maryland, which Baldwin, is okay. best known as Jacksonville Four Corners or out Long Green Pike Way, you know. Uh, I, Baldwin's kind of more Sweet of a zip, air. Yeah, sweet air. It's more of a zip code than a, than a, <laughs> than a place. But, uh but our little neighborhood crew gets together, you know, for Friday happy hours out outside on the corner on the street. And, you know, it's been that that part of it has been absolutely magical. So, yes, there is beauty in COVID. It is completely awful. Uh, it has been very disruptive. But uh, as you can see, the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, I, th there are elements of it. I think we're going to look back on and and, uh, you know, miss. I'm going to go negative on you a little later on. All right. We're going to get guns in. And because we had Justin Fenton on talking about crime uh, and, you know, your former delegate as well. And, and you know, having some uh, not just doing what you do at Blondell Miller Schuler and damngoodlawyer.com, which is, of course, if you get in an auto accident, you know, Todd and Mark, if you have an a injury on the job, you call Todd or Mark. Simple as that damn good lawyer. But before I go negative on you, 
I got the rainbow uh, over my shoulder here. It's this side. I got to keep turning the other way. I would not, I was not cut out to be Bob Turk on this, uh, this crazy Chiron. So green screen. So I have a double rainbow. If you can see, that's not really Essex, but it looks a little bit like Rosedale. Maybe become a little bit more this way would be Essex. Right. So, um, I have been walking through the city with my wife last week, this week with some friends. My wife has been doing a yoga retreat and spending time with her mother, whom she hasn't seen in two years. And she's got her shot and I got the cat and the cat's freaked out. But that's another story. Uh, so we've been walking around the city. The city's getting better, dude. And I don't, I don't mean this in some trite, you know, PR way. You know, I mean, I, I was the guy that started this thing because I didn't like the direction the city was going in, right? And mixing my sports with my politics and all of that. Uh, and my crab cakes soon, soon enough. And, and you know what I'm talking about. But I walked down Eastern Avenue. We walked to La Barita. I gave a, a free plug the other day to an Argentinian restaurant that's two doors down from where myself and my father-in-law separately but never together would drown our sorrows watching my wife and his daughter disintegrate in the hospital the second time around where she was pretty much in a coma for two months that we would go get a, a beer and a burger in this neighborhood that looked at the time extremely challenged seven, six, five, six, seven years ago. Now, like it's getting better and I'm walking through it and I'm seeing the Italian garden lights and I, I walk the city. It's not all getting better. It's not all getting better. But at one time, it's certainly not during a plague. But having been a guy that's walked around the last 13 months, the things that are going to be cleaned up, the businesses that are, we're going to start the next chapter after the great fire of the universe, you know, for Baltimore shutting down, the businesses that are open are going to do well and people want to come out. There's a lot of people who live here. You see that on the car. You know, it's not a deserted city. It's a city where people stayed inside during a plague, and they're starting to come out along with the cicadas. I hear they're good eating, Todd. Um, Can't wait. And I'm telling you, from a trash perspective, from a business perspective, from people moving around, the people that are here that have staked the claim in being here I really feel some sense in the aftermath of this that they want to be a part of fixing it. And that's, and, yeah. that, and that's without going to a cocktail party. That's just me walking around the street yeah. to see how, how, just, what the vibe is right now. I can't wait. I mean, I, I have a sister-in-law and brother-in-law that moved from Omaha, Nebraska last June to my neighborhood. And they haven't seen Baltimore yet. Like, right. Like all the, all the advantages of being here, all the, uh, going down to Nacho Mamas and playing on the paddle boat. Can and I taking ask the obvious, game. what the hell was in Omaha? Uh, he's from Omaha. Uh, my, oh. my brother-in-law is born and raised Omaha. And I just uh, thought that was a place Peyton Manning talked about. I wasn't sure. Omaha, Omaha. <laughs> right. Uh, no, uh, it's a beautiful town actually. Omaha, Nebraska is a neat, uh, Omaha can, this, this will give you your city vibe. Omaha can annex any part of Nebraska that it wants. And so as that at one plague that has occurred in, in cities on the East Coast is you can you can escape as being part of the tax base, right? You can live where I live and you can work at Leg Mason and you can go to have Raven season tickets and you can fly out of BWI three times a year. But then and the you city around, can never get a nickel from you. Yeah, other then you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa tickets, Baltimore, right? don't give me any Baltimore problems, you know? Like that has nothing to do with me, you know? Uh, and you Except get that. Except when your state taxes come and Uncle Larry sails Baltimore down the river and you're like, good for Oh, I'm paying for that too. Oh, but sorry. Omaha will get these like, you know, white flight neighborhoods and they'll just be like, all right, you're part of us now. You know, like we're, they're not letting the, it's sprawled, you know, so it, it doesn't concentrate it downtown quite as well. There's a great, the uh, World Series, uh, College World Series is in Omaha every year. There you go. Great ballpark. We went out there a few years ago. So much fun. Uh, I have a feeling I could get a Roos Chris style steak in Omaha. Oh yeah. 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 There's a place called the Drover, which is like, uh, not as much Roos Chris. It doesn't, it doesn't play the, the white tablecloth angle a little bit, but it's everything's buffet except for your steak. You know, they got the big salad bar and the onion bar and all that. You said the Rover and I'm hearing Led Zeppelin. I'm hearing like Jimmy (laughs) Page roll through that, you know, chord progression. Uh, but yeah, get to Omaha if you get a the chance. Drover. I, I'll never forget that. Now you've told me that. Nah, it's a cool spot. I, I, I find that to be a really neat town, but boy, do we have one like you're saying. And, uh, 
yeah, I I can't wait to to be there. I I, I want to go to Oriole games. I so wanna... your family from Omaha? Have they been anywhere in Baltimore at all? I mean, a little bit here and there. My sister in law they've they've been out here to visit us, and we've you know done the harbor. All right, and... whenever they're ready, uh, I I need to meet some people from Omaha. I I need to meet some more. I mean, I know Sam Cook, but he's like from a farm, you know, in Nebraska. Right, right. Guy. But um, yeah, I mean, I've I've met people from the. I mean, I I don't know anyone who lives here who's from Nebraska. Uh, that I'm aware of, at least. But uh, yeah, if they want to come down and see my town, I'm happy to uh, to show them around. Put don't them let, on foot. Don't let the Baldwin zip code fool you. That's my town too, you know. <laughs> Just bring me some dressing. I mean, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, yeah some give me some of that dressing. dressing. You don't yeah, pick up two or three next time, because every time I go up there, they're closed. If you, I don't want you anybody to have to sees ride. Paul Masano's a Baldwin, tell them every time I drive up there, the vineyard shut down and the corner store is not ready to sell me dressing. I will bring you wine from Dijon, and I will bring you uh, and Bordy, and and I'll bring you some Parmesanos dressing. We're the uh, we're the wine capital of Baltimore. I don't mind the drive, dude. It's lovely this time of year in the summer. You get some nice share a bottle of wine out at at Dijon from the farm. You get some heirloom tomatoes. I mean, you go in August, you might even get yourself a a gold watermelon that I love so much. Todd Schuler is here. Uh, They are damngoodlawyer.com. I get to grow my hair long. They get to represent people by keeping their hair short and looking good. Mark's going to join us in a couple of weeks. Tell everybody what you do in a nutshell, and then we're going to get into – we did all the happy talk and how nice my meals have been, and we're going to do the crab cake thing. We're going to do the cicada thing, you and I. We're going to do the Pizza John's thing as well. Um, By the way, Marty Conway went to Essex on Monday and was looking for like a place to eat and like wanted to go to Pizza John's. I can't wait to get there. I can't wait to get there. I'm refereeing a game at Mount Carmel on my, I said, my parents got married there in 19. Ah. Right there. And then he tells me the game's Monday. And I'm like, uh, the pizza. can't go to Pizza John's on Monday. Who the hell scheduled that thing? I mean, what do you think? <laughs> you don't schedule anything in Essex on Monday, except the, the with, with your, but you guys have been in Essex forever. I mean, the name on the building literally predates you and Mark, but um, I mean, you got a wonderful family practice, local practice with really an incredible story about like bricks and mortar on Eastern Avenue in the heart of Essex that I passed sometimes uh, because I was yo quieto, uh, you know, about 1.30 in the morning and I oh. needed to make a, a run for a half dozen off Eastern Avenue. We're but, right uh, there next to Taco Bell. And, I know uh, that. That's what I was saying, man. I was hitting that Taco Bell during the uh, Summer Olympics back in 84 with Joe Elliott. Believe me. <laughs> and I don't mean Joe Elliott from Def Leppard. I mean <laughs> Joe Elliott from Bank Street. Mark, uh, Mark and I both worked for Blondell and Associates. We worked for a guy named Bill Blondell right out of law school, each of us. He's about nine years my senior but uh but we both started our careers here uh at the office staff a, a large majority of them or, or at least half of them predate uh mark's hire or my hire they've been doing uh workers comp and personal injury law right here on eastern avenue uh since before i was born would be a, probably a good accurate way of saying it but uh Mark and I have been. How often do you do something stupid that they save your butt? Be honest. Be honest about time. your crew. All the time. I, I, the the skill of the people that work here is second to none, and uh, and I believe that. I've worked other places. I've worked with some very skilled paralegal and office staff uh, in other places, but we have an operation here that is designed uh, to very efficiently handle workers' compensation and auto crash claims. Uh, and, and those are the because two of the people primarily, I mean, if you're hurt anywhere, you know, we want to know about it. If it's a medical malpractice situation, if it's a construction accident, motorcycle accident, boat accident, a uh, dog bite case, we want to know about all of that stuff, but yeah. You want to sue somebody and, that screwed you on a business deal. You want to get divorced. Do you, be, you know, somebody died. Do, do, can we call you on those things you too? You call or me no? on anything in, in, All of the three that you just mentioned, we will probably steer you to somebody who's a little more, who's got an office staff particularly focused on that. And there are people, there are lawyers all around town that will steer you toward us when you come into our specialty. But absolutely every consultation, every question is completely free. You'll talk to me or Mark. And if we can't help you with your legal problem, we're going to find you somebody that can absolutely. 
Todd Schuler is my dude. You can find him out on the front of BaltimorePositive.com. Former delegate, Todd Schuler, I'd say. Uh, former. Well, you're never really a former Calvert Hall guy. You know, once you're in. Yeah, you're once you're Hall. Life, once right? a Cardinal, always a Cardinal. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's lacrosse season around the corner and all that stuff. Go baseball season happening here opening day. So I want to get uh, I want to get down the negative road with you here because uh, we've done Baltimore Positive. Uh, we had uh, Justin Fenton on last week talking about crime and – um, and the gun trace task force and guns on the street. And, you know, just the, the news comes on every night, right? And you think guns in the city, uh, it's urban, it's usually black on black, it's young, it's usually male, gang related, you know, all the things that The Wire was written about. And then there's the, you know, uh, the, the mayors that are in jail for the FBI with the FBI closing in on money they're stealing or they're stealing gift cards or you have other grifters that have get are getting written up this week apparently right uh, who've avoided Baltimore positive coming on the show I wonder why neither one have been on but nonetheless um, the gun trace task force thing dude I haven't talked to you about that and actually your Kimasabi Mark Miller and I we don't we don't talk like old friends. We sort of text back and forth in Dundalk code. Um, and, you know, he was reading Fenton's book and we had Soderberg on. You're a delegate at the, you know, maybe at the time when a lot of this stuff was going on. The dude who was the ringleaders from Essex right down the street went to EBT. Right, right, right. Jenkins, right. Like I'm learning parts of this in the last six months that when Sean Souter was murdered or my wife was dying in the hospital or Freddie Gray was going on. There was a little bit of la, 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 I don't want to know. And now, like, the story's really – it's going to be like what happens with Trump when it's all over. Like, people, la, 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 I don't want to know. When they find out what was really going on at that hotel across the street, you, you won't want to know. But now books are being written on the Gun Trace Task Force. You know, where do you sit on all of that as a guy who ran for public office and counted votes and all the stories that, that you've given me? I don't think we've ever talked about this particular dirty crime. That particular dirty crime, you're absolutely right. Mark Miller has has followed that, has watched it almost like, uh, you know, uh, before there were any books, Mark was trying to learn everything from any, any source he could. And, and it's it's fascinating and it's awful and it's terrible. I. I, I don't follow well, the lack of accountability in government that we talk well, about. Right? Yeah, I, I'm better off with I mean, I worked with Kathy Pugh and I worked with Cheryl Glenn and I worked with Nathaniel Oaks and, you know, individuals that have gotten themselves in uh, in trouble and you know, for, for pretty It's dumb easy stuff. to do, right? I mean, it's like it, somebody's going to try to do something or involve you in something that's probably not in your best interest. Well, and you're probably better off to not be involved in any of it if you're Johnny O. Is it, yeah, yeah. Right. I was always scared about, like, just being a target. Like, oh, I'm a delegate. Like, does my tax guy got everything right? Am I, you know, like, am I going to step into some nonsense that I didn't even realize when I crossed the line? Mistake, but, a legitimate Error you, of omission in some you way. You have right? to know. If I'm worried about that as a nobody delegate in 2002, you cannot get elected to mayor of Baltimore and think that you're going to get away with people buying fake buying your book. Like I, 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 I yeah, but what if, Brandon, you're, what if Scott, you're a cop from Essex who's a white guy in a black unit who somehow identifies people that are willing to break the law all together while climbing a circle while getting guns off the street while shaking down everyone while sk sk you know skimming hundreds of thousands of dollars and thinking like this is going on systemically forever and no one can catch you well that's a that Flip it uh, again back to the story. I'm more Say what you want about Kathy but, Pugh. She didn't run around with a gun every night and, and a badge. And she's the only one that went to jail, right? Like, where, where are the people that were buying the book? You know, like, where, who else is involved in this? You know, like, how come it's the mayor that takes the head roll and nobody else does? I, I don't know the answer to that question, you know? Um, who was but, she doing favors for? Exactly, right. exactly. I So I, I grew up in the shadow of Tommy Bromwell, who had his, uh, you know, scandal years before. And I served with Eric Bromwell. He's a good buddy of mine, you know, Tommy's son. And um, and I still I still know Tommy. I mean, he was, you know, family friend and all. But, uh, 
you know, a lot of people went to jail there. People, there were a lot of like six month perjury charges for like lying to the FBI when they came around and started asking questions. And the Kathy Pugh thing went down. Well, that, that was 20 years ago, the Bromwell thing, right? That was 20 years ago ish. Okay, so yeah. 25. Um, okay, well, whatever it was. But like, I have Ted Venetoulis on every couple months, and we never not talk about Agnew and Dale Anderson and like, you know, all of that. And, so there really has never been any period where like it's been on the up and up or whatever, but the policing thing, that's just something that, you know, black lives matter coming in you know, and everything that went on last summer, you, you, the Freddie Gray incident, obviously police related uh, and a death in, you know, while, while uh, being detained. So, so all of these things come back, but to think that this was going on, in this unit, in this city, when my wife was in the hospital, it got me five, six, seven, eight years. I mean, this is recent. This is not some fairy tale on the wire that was fictional from 25 years ago with a fictional O'Malley and a fictional everybody, right? This but is you, real. Yeah, but Cher, Cheryl Glenn, again, is a delegate who only in the last recent couple of years, and she was, I mean, everybody's grandmother. I loved Cheryl Glenn. She was a labor person i came from labor that we were both sort of you know union democrats together and and it's like a cash bribe situation like you, you can't I probably know a little better than that right like but it, it must be prevalent enough that good people get caught up i had such high hopes i i again i knew i worked with i respected kathy Pugh. After I was a uh, delegate, I would still appear in front of her committee on workers' compensation bills, and she was nothing but professional and nothing but good. Um, and I was optimistic. And She's I was, also and, a thief, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I, I was very disappointed. I, I, I thought she was, you know, the transition to get that Baltimore, you know, jump start, uh, you know, uh, that, that we hope is coming. Um, and maybe Brandon is. I hope Brandon is. I, I, I don't know him. But I know a good a good friend of his, um, um, and you know. But I, like I started to say, you think he's not being watched by the FBI? I mean, like, you, you, how many mayors of Baltimore in a row have gone to jail? They're at least checking in on him. You know, he you gotta know that when you show up. I would think, and the same with my friend Johnny O. I mean, uh, something you mentioned, Dale Anderson. Like, what percentage of Baltimore County executives since the county had executives in the 1950s have gone to jail, right? Agnew, uh, a, a big enough percentage that you got to know that when you're running a county government or, or a city the size of Baltimore, they want to, they got their eye on you, you know, and you got to be squeaky, squeaky clean. You can't be accidentally backing into some stuff, you know. You can't be you gift card clean. You got to be squeaky clean. Gift card clean. I mean, imagine that, that gift card, uh, you know, the Sheila Dixon stuff is, ticky tack in comparison you know that's uh who's the guy the police guy under o'malley that's on the radio uh norse uh yeah he was like you know there was kind of like the 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 chief slush fund and i think he was kind of you know buying suits out of the chief chief slush fund and you end up with six months like that was the kind of stuff i was worried about like it's sort of a tradition that this fund exists and the guy before it had it and you know like i mean they want to hang you up they hang you up like that that feels that way to me but uh but some of this other more complicated stuff the, the sheila dixon stuff or the the damn cash bribes across the desk i mean you gotta know you, you're not backing into that you're making a conscious decision there right Todd Schuler is here. Blondell Miller Schuler, damngoodlawyer.com, the way to find them. They are in Essex. Last thing on guns and gun trace task force. They're trying to get guns off the street. Again, it's all perceived to be city on city and guns on guns and guns are the same. And everybody on the, I drove to Pennsylvania. Everybody's with the NRA. I get it. And then this Boulder incident happens. And we just, for anyone who travels around the world to realize how many guns, guns we have in this country, whether it's the gun trace task force dealing with you know gangs and doing crazy things while they have guns that we're paying for, or whether it's, you know, my uncle wanting to shoot a deer on the third week in November, you know, and having a, a shotgun in a case when I, in the 1970s to, you know, these killing machines, these 
these assault weapons. My wife always gets mad when I call them machine guns because I call them machine guns. She's like, they're not machine guns. That is technically untrue. You're right. Yeah, whatever they are. Yeah, they're I got you. designed to do one thing, I, kill hey. lots of people. And I get sideways on this topic with people, especially in the aftermath of one after another after another. We're the only civilized society in the history of the world that would allow this in other places they they just they can't fathom this in asia because they don't kill each other it's just not they're not wired to kill each other i i was a democrat on the house judiciary committee with an a rating from the nra so i was pretty much a pro-gun democrat i mean it was almost my 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 republican bona fides came from that issue more than probably any other and um, Do you consider I, yourself wrong years later? Well, I, I not necessarily. I, I, I don't. You know, there were bills in front of me that I took on a case by case basis, and you know, made my decisions on. And and maybe if I could revisit some of them, I I don't know. I mean, there. Was, State needs to know if I have a driver's license, and they don't need to know if I have a machine gun. Pardon the vernacular. You get well, what I'm saying. Well, what I'm saying is Something that something that could come over and kill that you bill was never like in this. front of me. You know, like uh, yeah. But well, I, I'm just saying. The problem. Like that, the problem is been in front of somebody who screwed up. Debate is shut down. If the word gun is in it, debate is shut down. And, and there are things like universal background checks and the gun show loophole, things that have 80 percent support of the country. Uh, common sense, easy things that have consensus. And the minute it comes up, it, it's almost like this fear of you give them an inch and then everybody's going to come get your guns. You know, Obama's going to come get your guns. I remember Bill Clinton was going to come get your guns. I was in college. It was a long time ago. You know, like it's not true. You know, the, there are ways, there, are, there is consensus and we got to do stuff. I mean, we can't just shut down debate every time the word gun comes into it. Too I think soon, that... Todd, Todd, Todd. It's, it's too soon. Let's, it's let's too soon. offer our thoughts and, and our prayers. And well, it's just too soon. I mean, there's we can't no, talk about it right there's now. There's no but... other issue that I can think of. I mean, like reparations can get talked about or, uh, you know, m pick your top, you know, the, all of the voting rights stuff, like everything can have these incremental battles and, and, and the like. How, how much gun. money from Russia has funded the NRA? If you're guessing. <laughs> I don't have a guess on that. I, I don't know, but I, I know that the NRA is a divisive sort of force in the United States of America and a, and a, you know, in a one issue machine. Uh, and frankly, NRA members are in consensus on a great deal of common sense gun reform. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to speculate that. Common Russian sense money. gun reform. Why? Th that's all I ask. That's what I'm asking for. I'm not asking for everyone to go door to door and take your machine gun away. I'm just asking to know that some guy that's beaten the snot out of his wife six times can't have three of them. Well, like I said, or even one of them. Education. Really. We can we can flirt with charter schools. I did the Joby Palzinski you know. thing. You know what I mean? I'm East Baltimore. You know what I mean? Like right, right. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. I. I we got to take the temperature down, and we got to figure out what everybody agrees on, and and that has been increasingly difficult. Uh, um, over the last 30 years or so, uh, even, even probably back to when I was, in I politics. just wonder like when guys are shooting with machine guns out of the roof of Mandalay Bay and shooting up kids and then other people deny it ever happens in front of their families. And, you know, eh, it was just another, just another thing. Like the thing in Atlanta last week, just another thing, random, you know, I had a bad day, right? I had a bad day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just needed some sex. He's a sexual addict. Yeah, great. I mean, like the way the news cycle eats these things up and we just move on. And then the next one happens and we're all thoughts and prayers too soon. We, I mean, I, I, I would like to think it's something at some point when Democrats in control, because the only way anything's going to happen is Democrats in control. If it's ever to happen that at some point here in the next two to four years that, Something would look like progress. That's all. That's all I'm. I'm, well, I'm asking for something that would look like it not getting worse a year yeah. after we shut the whole society down. Step Literally. one is being allowed to to talk about it and make proposals. That's what, like I say, you, 
in education, you could talk about charter schools, you could talk about school vouchers, you can dismantle the public school education, you know, we, we could, we could put everything on the table and whatever spurts out spurts out if there's consensus and things like that. We don't have that with guns. We don't have it with immigration either. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, uh, that's a system that has been needing fixed for 30 years. There are things that everybody would agree to. Uh, it's just, if you say the word immigration, then you're going to have this pitched warfare, you know, World War I trench style warfare. And, you know, we're not going to pass anything. That's the it, it is amazing the country couldn't come together during the vaccine. What a really poor leader the former guy, the con man was. I mean, like, it's, it, it really is amazing because I do see the sun coming out. You know, I do see baseball coming back. We watch basketball all weekend. Kids are getting lacrosse sticks. Shots are going in arms. My wife's got a shot in her arm. She's back to living some semblance of happy things in her life. I'll get mine soon enough to be happy, right? In the meantime, I'll walk around and try to stay away from most people, right? Um, it feels to me like this thing, the vaccine thing, and Biden promising right and left, blue and red, east and west, north and south, that we would vaccinate people, that that is at least – if for all the failures of government, every time I hit a pothole, Brandon Scott, in Baltimore, right, or see a piece of trash or a rat or whatever, um, the vaccine thing, I get the vibe by Christmas, we'll look at that and say American success story. Now, Absolutely. Trump will take all the credit, of course. But, Don't worry I mean, about who's that. Who's listening <laughs> to him? But American success story. There's no limit on what we can accomplish if nobody cares who gets the credit, right? Isn't that the, isn't that the best? I think we can pull it out. I, we have seen dark days. We had Japanese internment camps in this country. We've had the civil rights explosion. We've had people in bondage for half of this city's or half of this uh, country's history, right? And we've come through it all. And we've had these gleaming moments, these beautiful, you know, we talked about the Woodstock movie earlier, you know, there have been these pockets of enlightenment and general, slow marching, frustratingly awful progress and progress and progress and we're getting there we're gonna make it the rainbow's right behind you i'm gonna make it to that beer at merriweather on that hill with you todd schuler how about know that, that. We'll all right mark miller's gonna come out of the sky look next week because of opening day and i have all these incredible interviews with legendary baseball figures i'm gonna run a lot of those including earl weaver and mike messina and frank robinson and brooks robinson and every hall of famer except jim palmer because he refuses to do the show so if anybody sees Jim, ask him, please come on with Nestor once in my lifetime. I'd love to say that it would make me complete. It really would, and it just would be fun. Um, so if, you know, if that happens, awesome. Uh, either way, next week is opening day, next Thursday. Um, are, are you thinking Oriole Baseball? I mean, your kids. Oh, yeah. You're going to go to a game or two early or April, May, June? Well, I'm going to get shots. What are you doing? Get my shots and my wife's shots in and make sure we're, you know, safe. I'm not going to, I'm not going to run out to opening day, but I'm going to watch it. I'm, I'm ready to go on the season. I, uh, I, I told you, I think last week, I don't care if we lose a hundred games, we probably will. I don't care anybody we can trade. If we get Matt Harvey up and running and we can trade him, I'd be fantastic. Like I'm, I'm in on the rebuild, man. I, I'm like, uh, I'm ready to go lose and I'm ready to go uh, trade whatever is tradable and I'm ready to do it again next year. And I'm going to be watching the games and I'm going to be rooting as hard as I can. Uh, I'm going to drink the bad coffee as I believe your analogy was. I got to get my, uh, my grandfather's bugle in here. My grandfather, Tommy arena was the second time I brought him up this week was a bugler at the uh, racetrack back in the fifties, did a couple preakness in the late fifties. So, you know, I, I see this and I just want to go. Boom, 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 boom. Something magic happened. So, yeah, so we're a week away from that. We're going to do some baseball next week around here uh, and continue on. Damn Good Lawyer, the way to find them there in Essex, Blondell, Miller, Schuler. Todd Schuler can be found out in front of BaltimorePositive.com for all auto accidents. Hope you don't have one. Uh, accident on the job, workers' comp. Hope you don't have one. But if you do, you need Mark, you need Todd. Uh, I will get up with you next week. Um, keep thinking crab cakes, okay? Everybody's giving me – New places, places I've never been. I'm Googling places. I'm coming up with prospects. I'm uh, making a list and checking it twice, Todd Schuler. all right? I can't wait to see your list. Can't wait to taste your list.
Well, we're going to start in Essex at Pizza John's because they got a new crab cake down there. Uh, I picked up a pizza with everything. You know, one thing I never had on my Pizza John's pizza before last week because I'm trying to get creative here. I'm trying to find the beauty in COVID by finding new things. I got the imported ham. Now, I didn't even know what imported ham indicated in, in, in Essex and, and at Pizza John's. But here's what it is, and my mom would be so proud of me because she loved it. It's red pepper ham, like a cayenne pepper oh, you know, right, around right. the outside sure, of the ham. Sure. It added really something to the pizza, you know, And because uh, I got the works, and, and, and I like the regular sauce, not the meat sauce, but I added the ham. So when you and I get together, we're going to get pizza, ham on the pizza, crab cakes, manicotti. I'm going to get those French fries that I love and dump gravy all over it. Put the ball game on. How about that? I'm ready. You let me know when you're ready. Todd I'll make, I'll I'll make that trip. All right. There he goes. Uh, Johnny, you on one side. Johnny, you on the other side. Johnny O, above all of them. We are WNST.net, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, growing our hair. We are. It's true. Dangling a little bit. I don't have much left. A little more product in there. That's all right. You know, I, I feel the rock and roll thing coming back. I had Mickey Cachell on this week, and I have rec record theater. John Allen and I are hanging out. So we're going to – I am so missing music that when the next time I go to a show, it's going to look like Hammerjacks 87. It's going to be good. We are WNST.net, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking Baltimore positive.